Hello and welcome to the latest edition of my Mara Diaries and today you're going to see how I shot these amazing low angle pictures of a cheetah through the grass. Watch closely because you can learn a lot and use it in your own photography. Right, I always look to do something different and something out of the box. And so you can see there in the background, there's just about, there's a cheetah on a mound there, which is really great. And the straight shot is to shoot it with a big lens. But what I've done, if you look down here, is I've got my camera on a really, really low angle into the grass. And what it's doing is shooting um, there, that, that cheetah on the mound, um, but through the grass with kind of a praise eye view it's a very difficult shot to take but it works really well so i've pre-focused in manual before i put the camera down on the cheetah using the zebra uh, af helpers um, and then yeah just shooting with a cord and it's it's very different um, and i always want to be slightly different i don't just want to take the same pictures as everyone else and i try to encourage everyone else to do the same there you go there end if the rouse the cheetah in the grass lesson all right there you go i recorded that in the field in a hurry just as i was shooting but basically you got the idea that i was using a monopod and a very cheap cable release you can use all kinds of you know bluetooth devices and all kinds of things to trigger i just use the oldest most <laughs> basic camera release that i can find because i trust it um, so i put the camera on manual focus i manually focused it on the cheetah when i was looking through I'm using the AF Assist Zebra lines. Then when I put it down in the grass, I didn't have to worry about the autofocus. I was just twisting it and using the monopod to position it to find where I could to get a line at the cheetah. Sometimes I managed to get a nice open space. Sometimes actually I just shot it with grass in the way. I think it's a really, really different shot, a really interesting shot on a cheetah. Yeah, I took some standard pictures, some normal ones if you like, but the light was a little bit hard. It wasn't that red. So I wanted to make it a bit different, a bit more interesting. Um, and I think that's really, um, a, a, what I really want to bring to you today is to try and push yourself away from just shooting the standard and the obvious and being different and trying to create something that's really inspiring to inspire others about your photography and to inspire you as well to push yourself. Because I think if you push and challenge yourself, you get much better pictures. Anyway, here's a small selection of those that I shot have a go at this at home trust me and send me the pics as usual on the email address below and I'll feature the best ones in Wild Angle so let's quickly have a look at some of the pictures I shot and why I shot them the way I did you're gonna see there's two kinds of pictures there's color shot with the OM-1 and there's infrared shot with the infrared modified uh, uh, mark 3 which is this is um, and I love using the infrared, I'm just getting used to it. Now you can see here why, I've got those beautiful eyes that are actually coming out, the infrared really picks them out. But this picture shows uniquely uh, why I wanted to shoot low angle, because you've got the horizon cutting across uh, the back of the cheetah. Now it was at an f-stop of 5.6, so there was not much depth of field going on there. Um, but even so, it's cutting across there. I, I like my cheetah to be, in it, to be in its own compartment, so either above the horizon or sitting below it, but not a mixture of both like this one. So sorry about the Cockney accent slightly there. Not a mix of like both. So that's why I decided to shoot low angle. So let's have a look at the next one. Now this is much more of a standard shot, again done with a long lens, but I actually held this one down the side of the vehicle. You can't see this right, but I'm actually doing this with my hands. I held this down the side of the vehicle, turned the screen up. I put the uh, uh, subject detect on mammal. So it got the eyes, got the autofocus squares roughly in that area and it locked onto the eyes straight away, and it's a very straight, normal, long lens safari picture of a cheetah. Not in the best light, because the eyes are not glowing. I kind of had to enhance them a little bit. Or I kind of just, I went around them and brightened them just a touch so you could see something, because they were quite dark, and you don't want to see, you know, a cheetah has really beautiful eyes. You want to be able to see the eyes. So what I did was brighten them up a little bit. Um, but I'd rather not do that. I'd rather they were actually in red light, right? Um, now, I can't help when we photographed it. It was about 11 o'clock in the morning, believe it or not. So the light was quite hard um, on it. So I decided to shoot low angle. Um, and the first picture I shot was this one. In fact, you can see there, it's got some interesting grass. If we, in fact, if we go back to the previous one, you see the cheetah I put on the right-hand side of the frame, looking into the dead space on the left. If we then, but it's a bit boring, that space on the left. There's no clouds or anything exciting in there, okay? But now look, now it's looking, I've kind of offset it a bit more in the center here, but you can see that I've got um, some grass fronds out of focus, albeit it's a little bit more interesting, isn't it? 
little bit more blur in the bottom of the frame, I think it's, it's yeah, a lot more interesting than the straight one. Now, when I tried to do this first of all, of course, I said I had the autofocus on, I put it down in the grass and it was a nightmare because the grass was uh, uh, blowing all in front of the lens. Uh, it couldn't get a lock on and I couldn't get the focus that I wanted at all. So what I did, I brought the camera back in, switched uh, the lens to manual focus and I used the AF Assist or Zebras or whatever you call them. Uh, in your camera system. Uh, the basic idea is that when you twist the manual focus dial, the areas that are in focus glow red or yellow, depending on how you set it up in your menus. For me, it's yellow because I find it easier to see. So I could adjust the plane of focus. I could see that the cheetah was, was in sharp focus. And I knew that since I was only putting the camera down the outside of the vehicle, the plane of focus wouldn't change. The distance would be roughly the same and the cheetah would be in focus in manual. Uh, and I'll be able to take uh, all the pictures I wanted because the biggest problem I had was trying to get a clear picture of the cheetah through the grass which is very difficult when you're trying to manipulate I'm doing it with my hands again you can't see it we're manipulate a, a, a camera on the end uh, of a monopod but I quite like this one I think this is all right now I played with my compositions uh, the biggest problem as I said I had was trying to get like the grass you know, in the right place. So this one, I managed to get the cheetah in the middle of the grass fronds. So it's looking into the dead space. And it's a bit more interesting, I think, than having a straight shot of a cheetah. It isolates it against the sky. That works really, really nicely. It's attentive. It's looking at something. It's looking interested. And again, it's looking into dead space. That's a really important thing. So I like this one. It's got a lot of uh, interesting space in it. And of course, I was taking multiple settings on the zoom on all of these pictures. So I would take a few, pull the camera up, change the zoom setting. I must get a automated uh, motorized thing to do that for me. Um, but anyway, I, so I put the camera back down, took a few more, put it up, changed the composition again, changed the uh, uh, effective uh, focal length and shot a few more. So I kept doing all that kind of good stuff. Here's another one that's quite a long way away. I got this right down in the grass, as you can see, and I managed to find when the grass blew a clear patch where the grass went over the top of the cheetah. And I quite like that. I think it really, really shows some nice colors and some nice tones. Um, the cheetah's a bit boring. I find that cheetahs are much better when they're looking back uh, rather than looking out. More on this later, but I put the cheetah, you can see here on the right-hand side of the frame, looking into dead space again. Uh, depth of field was 5.6. Um, in fact, it probably wasn't. It was about F4 looking at it now. So it was obviously a lot less, but you're down in the grass anyway. So all of this stuff is blurred. Um, one of the things I did notice, and I should talk about this, um, is the heat haze coming out of the grass. The further I went into the grass, the more there was a heat haze coming up in front of the camera and the more I had to struggle with sharpness of the subject. So often we blame ourselves when we go out for not getting something sharp in the middle of the day. Well, often it's not your fault. Well, it's your fault for going in the middle of the day, of course, when you should be sleeping or going to the pub or something else. Um, but you, you, you can't help you know, when an animal decides to turn up and you can't help the heat. So don't blame yourself. Just you might have to put a bit of extra sharpening on the subject to negate this wibbly wobbly air uh, that comes between you and the subject. All right, so I like that one. Um, this one, slightly different angle, but if you notice, again, it doesn't, have the, it doesn't have so much of the grass over the top. And I think it's all the more weaker for it. I think it's much better with the grass over the top, but again, it shows you a nice variation. There we go. And I started to yeah, use the grass a lot more, so I started to actually get the grass physically in the way um, of the cheetah. This one, I managed to get the head just about clear, but I've zoomed in a bit more here. And you can see it's a little more interesting. It's looking through the grass again, still manually focused, nice and sharp. Here, you can tell this looks a bit fuzzy and it looks a bit fuzzy because there's a lot of grass in between me and the cheetah's head. So it's not as sharp as the last one. It's still sharp enough and I've given it a little bit of sharpening on the head to bring it out. Um, but it shows the effect of having a lot of grass in the way rather than just a little bit around the edges. So, you know, very difficult shot to get, but I think you can agree it's worth it. Um, here's a lot of grass here, but I managed to get a clear space through to the cheetah's head. It's really difficult to do it, trust me, but it's so worth it because I think this is a really nice picture and, it, and it's very real. I mean, yeah, I wish the termite mound was pure red like we have in Savo. I wish the cheetah was standing up. I wish the grass was brown. There's a thousand wishes. I wish there was a sunset. I wish it was a silhouette. There's a thousand wishes I, I have about this picture, um, but I can only shoot what's in front of me. And too many people, they fantasize about, oh, I wish it was that. And this is rubbish because it should have been this. You can only shoot what's in front of you. So never make excuses for what you shoot because all your, your only responsibility is to do the very best that you can and to be a little bit creative. All right, here's a nice, 
Uh, don't worry, we haven't got many more of these to go, but I just thought you'd like to see the variation again. So slightly on the right hand side there again, looking into dead space, but look at all the out of focus grass now on the left. Isn't that really interesting? It's like a little bit of a pastel shade. I've done no processing to these at all. Um, I've just brightened them up a bit and flattened them a bit. Uh, just to flatten off some of the harsh light. But you can see that that lovely out of focus pastel grass has a really, really nice effect. And it looks like that, that, that grass in front is really, really moving. That's the effect of getting it really down into it. And I want grass in the foreground. I went to a great amount of trouble to get grass in the foreground. All right, a couple of infrareds for you to show you what the infrared is like. Now, obviously this is what I see. When you, when you shoot with an infrared modified camera, you look for heat. So it's useless in the morning and it's useless in the evening when there's no heat. It's useless in the Arctic, there's no heat. We need it somewhere like Africa or India. You know, when you give up with your, with your normal cam, your, your color camera, if you like, because the light is too harsh, you get your infrared out and it can look amazing. And I'll do another film for you on infrared in a little while. So you can see nice infrared there, just completely different effect. Uh, I love the, the shades of the grass and the tones of the grass. Here's another one going deeper into the grass. You can see I managed to get a really nice uh, picture of the cheetah with infrared. All the settings are exactly the same, but just comes out slightly different. Uh, they take a little bit of processing. You have to squash the levels and maybe do a bit of curving on it, uh, but not much at all. Anyway, you'll be wondering what my favorite picture is of the whole shoot. It's this one. This is the favorite one I shot because remember I said earlier on about the cheetah looking back. So the cheetah here looking back, it's got a much more lovely composition because it's looking back over its shoulder. It's got some really lovely tones of all the grass and some colors. So it's got a lot down below, a little bit up the top, but it's the cheetah looking back into the dead space that makes the picture. I'm very irritated by the fact that the top right hand corner hasn't got a couple of uh, stronger bits in it and I may recrop it but I kind of like the space. I like putting the cheetah at the top of the frame which accentuates the low angle view. So I hope that you've enjoyed all of uh, this that I've um, talked about uh, and you can try it with your own photography. So those of you that can't lay down in the muck uh, you can't get down because of a bad back like me or stuff like that or you can't get down just because it's impractical or dangerous to do so. You can use your camera on a mono with the screen tilted up yeah, and use the clever AF system that it's got or if there's grass in the way like I've done here, use the manual focus peaking um, and to create something different and I want you to think out of the box. As I said earlier on, uh, please uh, if you get anything using this technique uh, that we're really proud of, send it to the email address below and we'll feature it on the next Wild Angle. Anyway, hope that you enjoyed this episode of Myra, 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 <laughs> Myra Diaries and there will be more along very, very soon.